recording? Now we're recording. Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay. Good. It's Friday. Yes, it is. We're going to shoot a video. That's what you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about today... Yes. I jump right into Go the right in. Go, yeah. Go. Um, get, get yourself wet. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wanted to talk about today in the title of the video is yes. about uh, car buying websites. Yes. So we've got in the industry, you've got like your car gurus and your auto traders. And yeah. Your Cox, or excuse me, your um, uh, Carfax.coms and all that stuff. Yeah. Say Cox, Cox Automotive. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. own everything. But Cars.com. Yeah. 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 So you've got all those websites. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of people ask like, well, which one should I use or how do they work? And I was kind of hoping, I think the, the overview of how do they work is pretty straightforward. You search for cars, you find them. What's a little bit foreign, at least to me and what I'm hoping to learn from you, Dad, is how they work from a dealership perspective um, and how they get paid. Like, how do they actually end up making money? That that's was probably that's the, the quickest, question. That's the question. That's the quickest intro I've ever done. They, they charge the dealers way too much to uh, post their cars on their websites. That's uh, you know that that's how they make their money. Yeah. Um, let, let's let's do a slight overview, if we can, as to uh, at least in in my lifetime, uh, how things have evolved for how dealers advertise their cars that they have for sale. Okay. In the olden days, when I first started in 1977, uh, we utilized the newspaper and then most people or a lot of people today might not really know what a newspaper is but there were daily newspapers um, and it, it contained the news from the day before and they always had a clear <laughs> well hence the term newspaper you know um, I, I do just want to mention yeah you and mom always yeah. got uh well, you didn't always get, but for a long time we had the Wall Street Journal come to the house. Yeah. And yeah. I remember reading that. And yeah. Like feeling really mm-hmm. way more educated than I ever... Than the average bear. Yeah. Well, you were. Well, Mom uh, had a master's, so I guess that that was why we could get the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> yeah, and your, your father had, like, next to no education, but that's besides the point. Okay, so and I don't know why you're dragging me into that at the moment. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, the so newspapers. in the old days, yeah. we had we had the newspaper, and, and in the classified section, you, they had things that were posted for sale, whatever it was. Um, uh, so we used to advertise our used cars on there. I remember looking under pets one time, and they, there was an ad for a three-year-old uh, beagle, uh, uh, runs good, it said. I'm thinking all of a sudden, the beagle's a car? <laughs> it runs good. Um, that sounded like something I would say about one of the cars I would post in, for uh, used cars for sale. Would you Would you put all of your cars in the classifieds? A lot of them, yeah. Yeah, most of them. The I book, guess this you know. is how the classifieds used to be so big. Uh, well, yeah. You know, you, you had to come up with clever ways to advertise your cars so that they would stand out. And, and uh, you know, I... I, I always had a unique way of turning a phrase, and well, that found it found its way into the written word in in the classified section of of the Atlantic City Press and the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer. Okay, um, so that's, and and yeah. so you know, and then then we learned that you know you could actually you could actually use TV and radio for that, and and I remember you know that uh, at Admiral Nissan there was there were these two characters, Admiral Bob and First Mate Ray, and. I, I was the goofball that was first mate Ray. Go figure. Good thing my parents named me Ray, I guess. <laughs> and uh, and so we would do television commercials for various used cars that we had to create interest in the used cars that we had. Yeah. You know, I remember one time, uh, hey, whoop de doo for my Subaru. We have, you know, a Subaru Brat, whatever it is. And we would talk about what the cars. What is a Subaru Brat? It was a it was a short lived vehicle that don't worry about it, um, you know. And and then you would use radio. And then in the nineties, after Al Gore invented the uh, the internet, at least people say he's the one that invented the internet. But I don't know that to be true. Um, so th- that's when things like auto buy tell and and other ways came about for dealers to post their cars online. Yeah. Um, so when in the old days that we would spend a hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars per car um, to advertise. Okay. Um, and you know to advertise on television or radio or the newspaper, then suddenly became well okay we can if we're thinking that we're going to sell a hundred cars this month and we're going to allocate this was the nineties now we're going to allocate two hundred and fifty dollars per car to be used for advertising. If we do it digitally, that means we would have a total budget of twenty five thousand dollars for that month, and you could break that up between digital advertising, uh, radio advertising. Uh, TV advertising and very little print advertising at that point in time. Yeah. 
but you would have a budget that you would work with. Now you know I, I worked at, at a at a pretty pretty decent sized mini store. You know we we used to commit thirty thousand dollars a month to advertise. I was in one of your commercials. You, you were. Yeah. You, you were damn good looking then too, and you had a hell of a lot less hair. Um, and you didn't have all that facial stuff. But that that's a story for another day. Yeah. So. So, you know, every store allocates X amount of dollars per unit that they expect to sell for an advertising expense. So instead of it being TV and radio today, and, and some, you know, some of the bigger dealers still do TV and they still do radio, yeah. but the vast majority of advertising today is done digitally. And it's done on, on the used car side, it's done with Auto Trader, it's done with Carfax, it's done with Cars.com, it's done with cars go, Car Gurus. You know, and they come in and they sell you a package to put your cars on their website so that when somebody searches for a 2018 mini John Cooper Works convertible, the one at your dealership's going to show up first. Well, you yeah. pay for that privilege. So, to, to share with me a little bit, like, what is it like? What are the reps selling you? Because it just seems They're so... selling you clicks. Yeah. That's all they're selling you. They're selling you clicks, and they tell you, well, you know, and they and they can go dive deep down into where, where they're clicking and how long they're clicking and, and what they're looking at. And and uh, it's great if you have somebody that has the time, all, nothing but time to spend on looking at, well, where they're clicking through. And, and it doesn't, you know, it's like when Minnie would come to us and he'd go, oh, we're, we're driving so many people to your, to your website. And I go, okay, but... None of those sons of bitches are opening our door, okay? It's, it's, you don't want them to come to your website. You want them to come to your dealership. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to hear about how many people are visiting the website on a, on a weekly or monthly basis or an annualized basis. I don't want to hear how many things they're clicking through to, how much time they're spending on a page. It doesn't mean a thing if they don't show up to buy the car. Yeah. yeah when you but that's what they sell you. No, no, I get it. Okay, yeah, they, yeah. they sell you, oh, we, we can provide you with all that information that, well, isn't really going to help you, but you're going to have that information. <laughs> it's like when you think about the sales funnel in any structure, whether yes. it's buying a car, buying a house, yes. buying a pair of tennis shoes. You yes. go through a research phase. Yes. Uh, or it's um, uh, AIDA, uh, Awareness, Interest, Desire, Action. Oh, you I go like from, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good. AIDA. You so can you remember. A, you, you just proved you can remember shit. That's very good. <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have a good memory, by the way. Just Thank in you. case anyone's yeah, curious. For, for an old guy. Yeah. Well, no, in general, you have a really yeah. good memory. Yeah. But Can't remember yesterday. But <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> it's a long term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the point I was going to make, though, is a lot of these car buying sites. What were we talking about again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. A lot of these car buying sites mm -hmm. really... Uh, pitch to you this idea that um, you know you're going to get someone who's ready to buy a car rearing to go right now but I think the reality is at least for me when I think about it I, when I put my consumer hat on mm -hmm. uh, no I'm at the kind of awareness or interest stage like, I'm yeah. just doing some research trying to understand what the market price is like I use car gurus all the time just to see what cars kind of like are going for even though it's not the real price but yeah. still Oh, you mean you mean it's that fake advertised price on the internet that well you can't get. I'll put it above your yeah. right ear. Well, again. okay. In in <laughs> some cases you can get it. In most cases you can't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know because there's so many hidden fees that they haven't told you about that they're going to be they're just going to be so happy to share those those extra fees with you once you get to the dealership. Well, and it goes back to your point of like these sites sell dealers on the clicks and the impressions and the time on uh, site, but uh, not getting people in the door. Exactly. And then when people do get in the door. You've already kind of dug yourself this hole because it's like the customer has this expectation it's a thirty thousand dollar purchase when in reality the OTD price is thirty five, and it's like ah, this industry's I, broken. I, I remember I had a uh, uh, a rep from the Philadelphia Inquirer when it was really a a big time, well respected uh, newspaper with a huge circulation, uh, probably seven hundred fifty thousand or close to a million. Wow, and. Uh, and they did like a South Jersey edition, and he was he, he, he was a funny guy, which is why I liked him. And, and he said, "Listen, here's what I can guarantee: if you if you advertise in our in our uh, uh, classified section, I said, yeah. what's that?" He says, "I can guarantee you: a, you're going to be in the Enquirer, and b, well, hopefully, lots of people are going <laughs> to see it." 
I said, well, that that's certainly narrowed it down. He says, yeah, there'll be lots of people that'll <laughs> see it. Can, can I guarantee that any of them will come? He says, oh, no, I can't guarantee you that, but lots of people could see it. Okay, and that's that's what cars.com does. That's what cars guru. They, 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 they guarantee that lots of people could see it. They can't guarantee that lots of people are going to respond to it. Yeah. And... I know one of my major complaints that I've had with most manufacturers when it comes to how they, they market their cars, and with Mini in particular, because I always felt when I was with them for the eight years that I was with them that they really did a, a really poor job of creating any type of an awareness for their for their product, which is why it's remained a niche product. Um, but in my mind, it's the manufacturer's job to create ads and to create an excitement and an interest in the product Mm -hmm. it then becomes the dealer's responsibility to say folks now that you're interested and excited about this product here's why you should be coming to our dealership to buy it Mm -hmm. okay and people like the the the, uh, mini was like well you do all that you 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 tell them why they should be excited and you get them in but we're going to drive them to your website no no okay and and that's 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 how advertising dollars are spent today in dealerships is to just drive clickbait. The other day we were talking about Warren Beatty and then his, his, his cousin Ned Beatty. Yeah. And then the, the, the cousin they never really talk about, clickbaity. Okay, and that's really what this is. It's, yeah. it's, all, it's all clickbait um, with the hopes that, that if you throw enough shit against the wall, some of it will stick. Which it does. And it does. And, and in a lot of cases, it feels like you're throwing it against Teflon walls. You know, which is, from a dealership perspective, is really, really frustrating when you're legitimately trying to bring people in. Were there any of those search engine sites or True Cars or Costco buying program or any of the, the buying sites or buying services that generated really good, consistent opportunities or were they all kind of very hit or miss they were all hit hit or miss uh you know your, your manufacturers think that the dealers should be able to close 15 percent of the internet leads they get is that the standard that's the standard which which means which means and i'm saying this as nicely as i can which means the people that are in the marketing departments at these manufacturers are all on crack <laughs> okay because it's just not possible and the dealerships that are doing it they're they're cooking the books. That's yeah. the only thing I can think. They're cooking the books, okay? Uh, they're they're taking people that came in and bought cars, and then they're and then they're falsifying leads to yeah. say that they came in through the internet to show that they're closing at a higher rate. Yeah. People that contact you via the internet via the internet are the toughest people to close. The toughest people to get into the dealership require the most hand holding and 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 most time in in actually getting them to the dealership. Um, it's it's a false sense of of success when when you see oh my god we had seven thousand uh, uh, hits to our website. It's a vanity week. metric, and we've I've talked heard, you and I've, I've heard about of, that. I've heard about that. You you sent me some information about vanity <laughs> metrics that I like. But but I think um, what's really interesting about what you just said, Dan, yes, is it's at complete odds with how car buying is going right now. Like think about it. You really, in, in some states currently, can't strive to get someone to come into the dealership. You have to do it all. You digital. can't strive to drive. You, uh, I like that. T-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Um, Could be. No, but seriously. So it's it, yeah. they, there's this, and it's interesting hearing you speak because you were in the business for 40 plus years. Yes. You know, now you're out of it, but you're still doing Thank this. Thank God, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I'm, I'm very interested to see what like the new age of general managers do or the new age of VPs at these publicly, you know, bigger, bigger companies do because... We have to figure out a way to pivot to online, but I hear you loud and clear. And having, I do just want to share one other thing. Having filled out so many internet lead forms, Uh it is so hard as a customer to try and make a car deal with someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get this auto reply from one person, then an auto reply from another person. Yeah, they don't respond Uh, to the lead. They they they, they respond to the lead. They don't respond to the questions. uh, Um, and, and, And yes, if I was running a dealership today, yes, I would figure out ways to make it easier for somebody to buy a car online. Yeah. Okay, because that really is is the wave of the future. People want to be able to to buy these cars without actually having to come into the dealership. Um, that everything can be done electronically, yeah. um, and and that's the wave of the future. So yeah, you, you have to you have to embrace that, but 
the technologies that we're using today to to drive that traffic and the way that the dealerships respond to that traffic are are, are broken they're not Definitely. they're not ways that work um but they're ways that frustrate they they i mean you and i would get frustrated when we were working car deals on behalf of our clients Definitely. well guess what so is everybody else. Yeah, and I guess I will just share like the tactic that I use to try and uh, uh, avoid some of the frustration was when you're on any of these car buying sites to find the VIN, search the VIN, go to the dealer website, then just call the dealer directly and say, hey, I've got this stock number that I'm interested in. It's picking up the phone, it's calling, but it's you get more information more quickly than pulling your hair out with an internet lead. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I okay. guess the, the final question I'll ask is like, what do you, th- I mean, and, and we haven't talked about this at all, so I'm really yeah. interested to hear, what do you think the next evolution is? We've got these, we went from print advertisements and classifieds to radio to TV, and then we moved to, you know, digital with these sites that you search all the, inv- you know, I love, I also love people search nationwide for a car at the lowest price possible, and then yeah. it's like, honestly, the, the car buying site, you know, those are they're broken on both sides. Oh yeah. What do you yeah. think comes next? Do you have any ideas? I I, I don't. I, I hope I hope somebody brighter than me, smarter than me, uh, comes up with with a way to to, to make it easy. Um, you know, I've I've always professed that it, we should make it easy from from the dealership perspective for the customer. We should make it easy. That, that we should we should honor the customer and respect their time. Okay, and and not and not flim flam them, not bullshit them. Give them the price. Give them what the real price is. Let's all move on with life. Um, and and I did the best that I could in my limited abilities at, at how I ran dealerships to be able to promote that. Yeah. But I don't know how you promote it on a nationwide level. I don't. You know, unless unless. Unless all all cars get sold one for what, for one price yeah. and and whatever, uh, and I know a lot of BMW dealerships are going to um, market based pricing. In other words, the manufacturer looks at what the average retail price is, and then they and then they can then they can list the car at what the average retail price is, and that's the price. And I, it doesn't matter whether you buy an Oshkosh. Wisconsin, or you buy it in Poughkeepsie, New York, or you buy it in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the price is the price. And that, that is the way that it should be, yeah. because it takes, it, it takes all the nonsense out of this. And, and because what most people want to know is that they didn't get ripped off. Well, if they know they're paying the same price as everybody else, then they'll feel better about it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It'll improve, it'll improve how it happens. Well, I'm really impressed. Uh, Oshkosh, Poughkeepsie, and Flim Flam, all in the course of like a minute. That's I, I thought I did pretty good. We might do. We might do a, a, at the end of the calendar year. We can yeah. do like a year in review, and yeah. I want that segment. To okay, be good. Yeah, throw that in. Oshkosh, yeah. Poughkeepsie, yeah. Flim yeah. Flam. I think we've done enough. I think we've done <laughs> enough damage for one day. <laughs> all right, Dad. What do you think? I'm good. You good? Uh, Hey, I'm good. I, I, I hope uh, I hope today's uh, adventure was uh, well fun. I think it was. I okay, good. Should I hit the button? Yeah, do it. Do you want to hit the button? Okay, whatever. You're left.